So today I'm going to be reviewing four separate albums. Remo Drive, an indie band with their album Greatest Hits, which I am totally loving on. I'm going to go into more detail. I'll play a little transition, give you guys a sample of each record, a song from each, whenever we transition between the albums there. I've got Sorority Noise with their new record and one that I had definitely been anticipating. We got Laura Marling's new one as well, in addition to finally Knox Hamilton. Sound off in the comments section if you guys are okay with videos like this from time to time. I don't always want to do these, and I know a lot of you do like seeing me on camera, but think about the benefits. We get more people watching these smaller band reviews, and this is the only way that I can clickbait with album reviews, but is by sticking multiple bands or else artists in the title of the video and hoping that maybe more people will click on it, because if I titled a video, Remo Drive Greatest Hits Album Review, I might get like a thousand clicks versus, oh, I don't know, I review Ed Sheeran, obviously, 20,000 clicks. So hopefully this works. Hopefully you like the four-in-one video. Let's leave a like on the video today to let me know that you did enjoy it and we're gonna start off with Remo Drive. The bags in my eyes are too heavy to carry. I wonder if you're around. My feet are too fragile for where he's bearing. Please come help me bring me down. I'm gonna be totally honest I had no idea who these guys were a week ago but I had a viewer by the name of Jackson the Epic that sent this to me and I just happened to be on Twitter checking and I believe it was the link to the video you're killing me from this record and I instantly saw something unique in them it's kind of like a mix of emo indie alternative there's a lot of different styles here and i really like that even watching the music video for you're killing me i saw something in these dudes and i was like this is this is fun and even though the lyrics are just biting and snarky i am drawn to this for some reason and i saw that their record was about to come out the very next day i started playing it and i have not stopped since then this is one of my favorite albums that i have heard in quite a long time a huge congratulations is in order for this band and i cannot wait to see where they go in the vocal department i would say that they channel everything from modern baseball to even something like the get up kids from the early 2000s they have a very distinct sound but also something that has traces of like late 90s early 2000s indie and emo and that is so rad listening through this record for the first time i was listening to cuts like obviously art school which kicked things off and i haven't been able to get that out of my head since then it's just like on a permanent loop i hear the guitars and even the vocals aren't school and it's just one of those things it's so unique it stands out to me because it's not conventional it thinks outside of the box and as i go through this record time and time again i find myself even drawn to the tracks that i wasn't necessarily coming back to the first time around. Some of these moments include Trying to Fool You, which kind of has a slow, sultry intro to it, but I love the lyrics. All throughout this record, I have to praise that because while they are very relatable, at times, just like I said, very sarcastic, passive aggressive even, and even mean spirited in places, you get it because you've been there, whether it be an ex, a friendship, or a life struggle, whatever it might be, these dudes have been through it as well, and they are speaking vicariously for me in places, especially just looking at some of these things and almost turning a middle finger, or else a very sarcastic sneer towards it. I'm quite taken taken back by how much I am loving the guitars and the tones all throughout this thing. They stand out so, so much. Art School obviously had some licks like I was talking about, but especially once we get to moments like Crash Test Rating, Summertime, Eat Shit, I'm My Own Doctor. They're varied. They're all over the map, but at the same time, they're loud, they're crunchy, kind of in your face, and you cannot ignore them just because they are simply that good. And some of the punching drum rhythms that really just push their way through, Crash Test Rating, for example, one of the best damn songs on Greatest Hits, really hits you on an instrumental level, and obviously comes back and grips you with the lyrical content that's there as well. I love the kind of whoa's that are added to the chorus that are sometimes looked at as a cop-out, but here they add a lot to the song because there is a lot of great lyrical content on the track and I love the build up to moments like that. And then Eat Shit, which I've already complimented, has a really interesting guitar pattern on it as well and like kind of a th 
thumping drum rhythm that really drives the track, and the vocal melody on that thing kind of fluctuates ba -na 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 -na, up and down the scale, and it sounds really good behind those thrashing drums. Hunting for Sport is an absolute ace up the sleeve, trying to fool you is a varied moment that I am totally loving on, and Summertime is a massive anthem sing-along that could easily be played in March, like right now, and it will fool you into actually thinking that it is summer. It's going to have you reflecting on older memories and looking forward to ones to come. It's just like summertime, living is easy, but how long can it last? I love that, the emo overtone there to it, once again, basically saying, oh, I know things are good, but they're probably gonna get bad again. Overall, Remo Drive, I am very excited about this band. I am loving on their debut album, Greatest Hits. I am easily giving this a 4.5 out of 5. P.S. If you would like to check out Remo Drive or any of the other bands that I'm gonna talk about in this video today, their Spotify links will be in the description down below. Laura Marling has always been a favorite of mine. I was introduced to her back in 2008 whenever her debut album, Alas, I Cannot Swim, came out. One of my friends at the time was into music that was a little bit more of the indie hemisphere, and I had totally not been connected with that community as of yet. And for years to come, I really wasn't that into it. Not that I super am at this point even, but Laura Marling has always been one that I've come back, been willing to check out anything that she would put out because she's never really failed me at all. And honestly, she's got another great statement here on her sixth record, Semper Femina. Now this British singer-songwriter has been putting out successful albums for years now, obviously almost a decade at this point. And her last release, Short Movie, was actually one of my favorite records. It just missed my top albums of the year for 2015 list. And this one has been seeing a lot of critical acclaim, and it's her take on kind of modern feminism and the woman's role in society. And whenever translated, it roughly says woman is an ever fickle and changeable thing. And I think this is kind of her looking at that and almost poking fun at it and basically on some of these tracks like soothing, she's sarcastically singing like I need soothing, I need somebody to take care of me, I need somebody to calm me down because I'm just a woman. And I like that statement because the statements that she is making here, they're not beating you over the head with it like some feminist will try to do, I feel like, in places and they almost hurt the cause. Moments like this are subtle, sly, and intelligent. And as she goes through songs like Always This Way, Wildfire, which is an absolute gem on this record that I am totally enjoying, the vocal, and just kind of subtle, almost jazzy affectation that it has, it is really nailing and setting the vibe that she's going for. It makes you focus on not just that light instrumentation that is lush in a few places, but mostly restrained. It makes you focus on Laura Marling's voice and the lyrical content that she has to offer. Don't Pass Me By serves as a fantastic kind of post-rock type cut, a little bit of the electric guitar. We saw her adding that in on short movie for really the first time, plugging in going electric, and we see a little bit of that on the excellent closing track, Nothing Not Nearly, as well. I think that is so smart. Such a really well done track, just overall, the way it presents its case and presents Laura, of course, as a vocalist on the tune. A very smart move, a very smart record overall, and while I can definitely see this as kind of being a grower for the casual listener, including myself, to be quite honest, I didn't really find this all that intriguing on the first couple of listens. I let it sit with me, I kept coming back to it, and overall, I have to give Semper Femina a 4 out of 5. Never looked back, no, at the price we paid. It was a priceless place. We give back, we give back, don't you know? Another under-the-radar band that I really have to recommend you guys is Knox Hamilton, finally coming in with their debut album, The Heights. Now, I had heard the track Work It Out. I almost feel like that was two years ago at this point, and I thought that they probably already had put out something 
and I had just totally forgotten about it because I heard that track. It's super infectious. It's got a great little guitar on it, kind of distant, especially during the chorus, and I like how they stutter in the electronics with the guitar. But apparently they had never put out an album until now, so uh, apparently my knowledge is just totally behind on these alt nation bands. I feel like I dismiss too many of them because I feel like they go for a similar sound or they just put out singles and they don't really focus that much on an album. I was wrong with Knox Hamilton because what we got here on the Heights is great and shows a ton of promise. I had to give it a recommendation to you guys. I'm going to go through some of the key moments that totally make this album work for me from Call Me Up, which has a nice steady guitar line on it. It is a little bit maybe more old school in terms of its vibe. It's very guitar driven and I like that it's steady during the verses, builds up to a bigger chorus, which I could totally see being relatable for some people. Almost a little bit of yearning and desperation in the voice there on moments like that or even the more introspective how's your mind and that one's a little bit slower but it definitely does build into something really cool and never my love which obviously does see the kind of pining and yearning aspect but it doesn't seem like so in a very desperate way it's something coming through very earnest and i love that about knox hamilton washed up together was a great choice for a single really enjoying how sticky and infectious that one is even pretty way to fight that's one that they've been promoting on all nation i've heard it a couple of times never really thought too much about it but whenever heard in the context of the record it totally works this album works period you guys have to check out the heights by knox hamilton i would be inclined to give this one a strong four if not a light 4.5 i'm not trying to say it's easy but i'm trying to say it's fine I still got some demons and they're not going to be leaving any time Finally, we have our fourth review of the day, ladies and gentlemen, and this is an intensely personal one, and one that I definitely want you guys to give a chance to, especially if you don't get it the first couple of listens, because I listened to this one night whenever I was tired, I wasn't really giving it the attention that it deserved the first time that I played it, really even maybe the first two times, but I can confidently say about six or seven listens in that this record is really, really solid. Sorority Noise with their record, You're Not As Blank As You Think. This is their new album that we've been anticipating for quite a while now. I know I've been looking forward to it because I found out Mike Sapone, aka the producer of Brand New and the majority majority of the stuff that they've put out was working on this and really the brand new worship on this record is it's pretty real in places and that was something that was stopping me at first from getting into it and while I do see it as a bit tedious here and there I think that they do nail it. Their lead singer, Cameron Boucher, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not even going to say anything other than his first name again because I totally feel like I fucked that up. He's writing these songs about dead friends, and while he does mention that maybe one too many times, a little bit too on the nose, he does struggle with a lot of depression. In fact, he's a manic depressant. That's something that a lot of people and a lot of bands actually struggle with. Just Modern Baseball recently had to cancel their tour with Sorority Noise due to mental health issues. And it's something that a lot of bands that write stuff in these scenes, you might think that they're just songs, but they're really not. And on this one, he's really mainly seemingly struggling about the loss of his friend, Sean. And No Halo, the first song on this record, and obviously the first single that we got and a taste of You're Not As Blank As You Think was released. It's got a smashing chorus on it, but at its core, it is a very, very sad tune. As I listen through this record, I see a man who has been truly beaten down and kind of stomped on by life. He's had two dead friends that he seems to be mainly singing about and talking about on this record, one to suicide, and that is just intense, especially for as young as they are, still in their mid-20s at this point. I see a man who has struggled with his faith with his confidence and with his own mental health. Listen to Disappeared, one of the pre-release singles, and he sings about 
being confident enough to just take a shower, let his hair down, and actually maybe get some pleasure out of life. Now this band has been very, very open about their struggles with touring, their mental health on the road, and everything like that, and I feel like some of that energy has poured into the album. Some of these songs do start off slow, and they have that slow burn effect to them, a la brand new. Some of those moments will build up, and like I said, with the brand new Worship, I mean, they're both signed to Triple Crown Records, at least brand new were at one point they've got mike sapone they've got the songs hell they even make a reference to sprained ankle by julian baker which brand new as most people know covered excellently on their most recent tour got to see that live for the record and that was incredible a portrait of is one of the best damn songs that i have heard from sorority noise i know everyone seems to be buzzing about this one i know a lot of people on the symbol are talking about it and it is great this is one of those moments that comes through as a questioning of god and faith and really in an interview he was actually kind of opening up about how he didn't know what to feel it's just like do i believe in an afterlife or do i just believe that these people like my aunt or or my friends, or whoever it may be, do I just believe that they're gone forever? I love the heavy grit that some of these songs bear, like a portrait of, it's a very loud moment, and disappeared, a better son, especially just the kind of twisted guitar riffs on that one, and even second letter from St. Julian, which is a great follow-up, I love that he's got those, kind of like incorporating the church into it, and some of the people that are involved in it, and just bringing the whole faith aspect, second letter Letter has to be my favorite though absolutely alongside leave the fan on two of the final tracks on here and of course the acoustic very quiet closer that is almost haunting new room I have to say it, this album goes out on a great note. It's something that weighed on me the more I listened to the heavy lyrical content, and while I thought it was a little bit rough at first, I would have to say that it's getting better the more that I play this, because you realize that it's real. You realize that it's genuine, and not just somebody seemingly trying to be sad or emulate that. It's someone that is genuinely terrified some days whenever they wake up, and whenever you think about that, I think you'll look at this album totally differently. I would give this a 3.5 to maybe even a light 4. I think this is going to be something that grows on a lot of people, and it could be something that I could even see being on some people's year-end list. If you guys would like me to keep covering smaller records like this, please help me out on Patreon. It really does help support the videos. It's a little annotation there in the corner of the screen. You can donate on a monthly basis to help me eventually do ARTV full-time and do all of the videos that I want to do. A couple of recent videos floating right below me, social media linked in the description. Be sure to slap a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys very soon right here on ARTV.